today the scripture portion that has our attention is Zechariah chapter 8 verses 14 to 17. For thus says the Lord of hosts, just as I determined to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I would not relent, so again in these days I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor, and do not love a false oath, for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. So God's people were disobedient for quite a while. He determined they were going to have to experience punishment. Remember that God's punishment, it's always educational in nature. Through Zechariah, he says, it's only after your fathers provoked me to wrath. So it wasn't that God just said, well, punishment's a natural thing. We're just going to be punishing all the time. But what it was, was he instructed them. They disregarded. He instructed. They disregarded. He worked his way up to the stronger kinds of punishment so that we can see that he's a merciful God. If we'd been more willing, he would have done something smaller. But a lot of times to reach us, you've got to use a pretty heavy brick or a pretty strong two by four. That's the way we humans are. The time of punishment is, is ended, and now uh, we're going into really good times. So get your seatbelt on. So now that God's ready to do good to them again, he reminds them what's expected. Let each man speak the truth to his neighbor. We saw before that justice and compassion and mercy, they all go together. And it's the same with truth. They are to, to be enacted in our actions toward each other and toward our neighbors. It's not in a narrow little box. It's the whole piece. I am to speak truth. I am to do justice. I am to do mercy. I am to make proper right judgment in the gates. I am to do the right thing. I am to do what's morally right towards all other people. In man's kingdom, any words that will match the necessities of the moment will do. But in God's kingdom, you do what's right all the time, every time. Well, back in those days, in the days of these walled cities and the, the gate, the gate was where uh, all the elders, the leading men, the leading persons of the city were there in that space. And if there had to, was something, a property issue or any kind of civil issue, those were the people who dealt with it. And they did it right away, too. It wasn't a long, drawn-out process. It's giving judgment in the gates means you don't bribe, you don't bend, you, you do what's right for every person in every case. Would it really be a bad thing to have those kinds of, of ethics Dominant and the only kind of ethic you could find in the world, would that be a wrong thing? Not think evil in your heart? Uh, that not that kind of intruding on my space? Can't I have my own free thoughts? It's a voluntary choice to be an ethical person. It's a voluntary choice to do what God says we should do, to do what God says is right. Our thoughts, they're our private thoughts, but we belong to God. So now your private thoughts and my private thoughts, they also belong to God. Our thoughts are in the moral space. In fact, were they ever outside the moral space? Because remember the Ten Commandments, for example, the Tenth Commandment says, thou shalt not covet. It was always an ethical requirement that we have right thoughts. There's things we've perhaps allowed ourselves to think, things we've allowed ourselves to imagine, feelings we've allowed ourselves to, to be, have provoked in us against other people. And God says, no, psychologically, it's not good for you. You're my child. You've given yourself to me. Now I'm counseling you. Don't allow these evil thoughts even to be in your mind. And it's a beautiful plan. It takes away all the psychological burden. It's not that we stop thinking. It's not that we stop feeling. It's that we start thinking toward others as we would have them be thinking toward us. These are the things we were designed for because God designed humans to be spiritual people. So there it is. It is an ethical prescription. It's the way it should be. It's a premium life. To sleep soundly at night, your conscience is not going to be uh, worrying you at night because you're, you're doing right to others and God has your back. And knowing that you're a positive, you're a plus on the, your planet instead of a minus. We've all been minuses. We all want to be pluses. God will help us so that we can be right people. Zechariah, the counsel that God's giving through his prophet Zechariah, is to get his people to come up ethically. And you and I, we're in the class right now, right? We're in the class to do other love. I'm still learning, and I pray you're learning too. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.